Hi guys, how are you? Welcome back to the spring garden on a beautiful spring day. Wind is on, we're in the front garden and the wind comes from northeast, which means just right through the gate, which is to your left, to my right. But as we go into the front garden, there's less wind and it's nice and warm and beautiful already. As promised, I wanna take you with me on a spring garden tour through the front garden. Already, already announced it in one of my previous videos, I think even twice if I'm not wrong, because the front garden at this time of the year looks really nice. Would be better, I think, in a week or two from now because we're just at the point where a lot and a lot of shrubs are about to burst out into bloom. But you know, very soon I'll be driving to Dusseldorf to Germany for a week or two and well, now is the time. Now or never, because I can show you still a lot of beautiful things. So this is kind of like the angle of how we enter the front garden. You're pretty much standing on the driveway, so the house is to that side. And the main entrance is not really facing the front of the house. The main entrance is more facing the back side of the house in a way. So you would just uh, walk along the, the driveway and then to your left there is the main entrance. But still, like when you come in here, this is just like the entryway into our front garden. And it is already flanked with a very beautiful tree. I did my planting video where I was showing you how to plant lavender. I removed a lot and a lot of the old lavender. So down here, they're still looking nice and smart. I'm so happy that I got on with that project. And right at the corner of that bed, there is this absolute beautiful Japanese cherry tree and it is about to burst into bloom. You can see all these tiny pink buds here appearing already. They are double flowers. They're very delicate and beautiful. It is always a little tender when it comes to frost, but there's no frost in the forecast for this year. So I'm really expecting a rather beautiful show of flowers. These kind of cherry trees, they are kind of known for a disease that happens after the flower. What happens is that the first leaves that you already see appearing as well, they wilt and then the branches wilt and basically die back as well. And this happens here to both of them. I have one here and I have a second one back there where the swing bench is. And what I do once a year, I would say around June time when all the foliage is out, I get in there and I just inspect it and see which of those branches have the disease. They're not looking good. I just come in with my secateurs cut them back. So the thing is that these trees, they grow rather slow because of that disease. There is a situation, but if you're a patient gardener, and I think I'm a patient gardener, this is just a lovely tree to your garden because the bloom is absolutely beautiful, wonderful, hard to compare it with anything. You have these pink clouds in the garden. If we continue walking on the other side here, just in case if you were ever wondering what this tiny little green box is, tiny, this is actually, we collect the rainwater from the roof and it goes in a um, kind of like a cistern, I think this is the right word for that, uh, in the ground. And then we have a pump which can go in here. So this is why we have it here. But during the year, it's almost masked up because I have some epimediums here, got some euphorbia, phlox, all different things. But most importantly, this time of the year is a beautiful amelanchia here. One of my favorite shrubs. And again, one of those shrubs that comes with childhood memories. My parents and grandparents had them in their garden. And what I love about these so much is that they are always multi-branch, which means you always have this beautiful canopy. So you have the cherry tree on one side, which is a single stem actually, like a tiny tree. And then on this side here, you have the amelanchia, which is I think called service berry as a common name. You can see if you go a little closer, all these tiny spikes that are shooting up now are flower buds. So they're just about to come to bloom, pure white, really beautiful. And the lovely thing is they produce berries and they are edible. They are a little tart. They're not very sweet, but they're perfect for your porridge or even for bacon. I put them in muffins last year. So really love the taste. You harvest them around June, July and June when they're very dark and like really nice and soft, then they are best. In autumn, those shrubs have a really wonderful autumnal color, kind of like all tones of crimson, which is really beautiful. If we continue walking, there is another tree that we planted quite early actually, and this happens to be one of my favorite. This is a prunus and it's just about to come to bloom. Just a billion of tiny, very delicate pink buds and blooms here. They're all open, they're no double, which means that they are obviously perfect for any kind of pollinators. And this prunus, you always find those that flower first and then they produce their leaves. This one here produces the leaves pretty much the same time as the flowers appear, but I love it. And you can already see the leaves, they come out in this coppery, rusty tone. And as they age, those leaves are gonna be the most beautiful, dark, plum, purple color. Fresh stems, they are also very nice, shiny purple, so really lovely. 
just as the wood ages, it kind of gets a different tint. And because there is a little shade here, there is a little bit of lichen on the trunks as well. So I think this is just absolutely a beautiful tree and one of my favorites. And I kind of think a must have for every garden now. Last year, there were a lot of fruit on there and you can't even eat them. They are really delicious, very sweet, but it's not like a typical plum where you can just like cut it open and get the stone out. The flesh is really attached to the stone there. So you really just need to bite it. And it's very juicy. It's kind of a mess, but delicious. Um, and I think last year was actually the first time we ever tried it because I wasn't really sure if you can eat the fruit of this prunus. Yes or no, you can. And they are surprisingly very good. We walk over to this side here. This is an angle that you might be very familiar with as well. This is the willow tree that we cut together last year. So really stripped it back harsh. I would say like two, some branches, maybe even three meters. Very happy about it. Still love the structure. You can see that there are a lot and a lot of buds already appearing everywhere here on this entire structure. So I say in two weeks from now, it's gonna be full of leaves and very beautiful. And they are so vigorous. I can tell you it is gonna grow again for at least a meter and a half this year, which is quite normal, which means the underplanting, I needed to choose plants that can cope with the situation and that are tough general. Um, some of which are Phlox David, is very adaptable, at least in this area here. Epimedium, uh, catmint, and sedums. They work perfectly together. I remember last year when I did a little tour here, people were commenting, how can you plant sedum and epimedium next to each other? Because one wants sun and poor soil, while epimedium wants quite the opposite. But they work so well together because this is sedum matronum, which is very adaptable, and the epimedium which just comes to bloom now here. If you come closer, this is sulfurium. And to my experience, this is also extremely adaptable. This also thrives really well in a more sunny location. And here comes Alfie, by the way, I'm gonna show you her in a second. This is a yellow tone, how I really love it. Kind of like pale, delicate, almost sulfury. And I think they have this really beautiful whimsical quality about them. Um, you might remember earlier the year I came in with my shears and just stripped all the old foliage back to the bare bones and now, all these shoots are appearing with this beautiful flower. So since the old foliage is gone, you can really appreciate all of those wonderful new blooms. Going to show you Alfie now. I told you in my last video, we were at the groomer. So this is little Alfie now. It's a lot less stock, isn't she? She looks so much smaller now suddenly. It's not like a woolly bear anymore, but I think she's happy. She was full of energy in the morning. Hmm? You were happy, right? Mm, Going to play it in a second again. She's already waiting with a stick for me. Well, it's also really nice in this area, and I think it works fairly well. Remember last autumn, we planted tulips, hyacinth, and iris in here, spring iris. And the hyacinth and the spring iris, obviously, they're already out. And whenever I plant hyacinth, I think they work best if you put them in blobs, basically. So I, I always put like five or six together. So I always have these uh, multiple blobs of um, hyacinth in the border. And then also in the combination, I try to find somewhere to step inside because everything comes to life now. So I need to be on my tippy toes. Just the combination of like these very pale yellow epimedium at the front with the white hyacinth and these like purple iris that even have a little bit of yellow strip, uh, um, stripe in the inside of their petals. I think it's just a really nice springy color combination for me. And this is basically what this entire front gun in terms of color focus on. It's all tones of like sulfury yellow with white and with all tones of purple and violet. Over here, there's a swing bench. Still not really using it because the temperatures are still a little too cold. I think we sat there maybe once or twice so far. Still beautiful, need to paint it though. And at one point what we wanna do is put a lovely rose next to it. I was thinking the one that already grows next to the garage, which is a Rambler rose. It's very vigorous. It's called Guerlain d'Amour, has white flowers and it flowers from June all the way up until frost basically, which is absolutely wonderful. So if you're looking for a rambling rose that grows a max of two and a half to three meters, Guerlain d'Amour might be just your thing. We walk over there, you've already seen this area a little bit, and I've shown you one of my favorite perennials in here, which is an evergreen perennial. And I think this is something which is really important because at one point when you have perennial borders, you come in, you cut everything back, all the ornamental grass, and you're left with nothing. So you need to have some sort of structure. And I think this perennial is the ideal structure that you can have in your garden. It produced offspring already, so I want to have a second clump just at the back of a border as well, so I have this element of repetition. But now is the time of the year when it comes to bloom with these long, elegant flower spikes. And again, very sulfury yellow. I think this is just one of my favorite yellow tones you could possibly find in the garden just here. Look at that. 
kind of like greenish yellow. And what you might think is the flower is not the thing. All these like bigger leaves outside are not the petals, they are the sepals. And just in the inside, these tiny, tiny things, this is actually what the flower is. So it is a rather interesting specimen to have. And on top of it, just from its ornamental value, there is something very zingy and almost tropical about it. Next to it, there is a robinia that we cut as well. I already looked at it. You can't really see a lot of sign of growth yet, but this is quite normal for it. That comes to life uh, back quite late in general. There are tiny, tiny buds appearing though, but nothing near to what the willow shows or all of the other trees are showing so far. And here you finally see in bloom one of my favorite bulbs. This is Fritillaria persica. This is a variety called ivory belt and it produces, as the name says, this really delicate ivory greenish white flower belt. And if you just tip it over, there you see the pollen inside. And I've already seen some bees flying here when the sun is out and it's beautiful. And I planted this as one single bulb quite some years ago. And this is what happens when a plant feels perfectly at home in its area. This single bulb kind of had offspring and now I have all these multiple stems appearing from what was one single bulb I think four or five years ago. So I need to remind myself next year that maybe I just buy two, three more so I have like one on the other side as well. So I just sprinkle them out because I really love this area. It's well drained, it's full sun, this is exactly what most bulbs really love and appreciate. Last thing almost that I want to show you in here is another euphorbia which is also very beautiful. This is one where I did an autumn video about when I was talking about interesting plants for autumn. This is euphorbia uh, tall boy and in autumn the foliage was really beautiful golden yellow but look now it's about to come to bloom. It produces runners so at one point it really is going to look like a carpet here and all these blooms in maybe two weeks from now when the temperatures are warm enough they produce a very sweet perfume kind of heavy and beautiful so sitting on the upper terrace you really get to enjoy this perfume it's even stronger than hyacinth hard to believe but absolutely glorious speaking of hyacinth container i um, need to remind myself to water it better Poor ivy, really not looking so good anymore. I think I need to replace it at one point, but at least the hyacinth, they are looking super nice. Multiple ones, white, greenish tint. I think they're just the perfect combination in here with um, all these tones of yellow, sulfury, white, green. So really beautiful in here. Last part of the front garden, pretty much the gate into the midsection of the garden. Here is a, a polonia tree. Oh God, I said it so wrong, but it has these like, spiky flowers, um, beautiful purple. This is very purple, pale purple in a way. Kind of nice, hope it comes to bloom this year. I tried to inspect for some bots, but I couldn't really see a lot. Has really nice big leaves, kind of an open canopy. It's not a tree that throws a lot of shade, but I think just in terms of structure, it is really a beautiful element here. And again, down here, just all, everything comes to life basically. You can really see the sedums, they're already looking really nice. This is a variety called Stardust down here. Uh, Phlox comes back to life. Then obviously we have the evergreens like the box spheres and the Frisicia also comes to bloom now. <sighs> this was here before I came. I like yellow when it's all free. I don't love buttery yellow, but I don't have the heart to replace or take it out. So it is allowed to stay obviously. One last thing I'm just seeing in the back of you, I just want to talk about this is also an area where the lawn is disaster zone. I'm telling you, there were vowels in here. So the midsection of the garden and the back there was more the work of a mole. Here, vowels did everything. So it is really bumpy. There are a lot of daisies in here, big patches of weed. There is one plant in here, which I mean, you don't want to have it in your lawn, but the thing is, it looks pretty nice in a way and it smells fantastic. So we have a giant, huge patch of violas in here. And obviously they had dark purple, so I really love them because purple is my favorite color. And yesterday afternoon when the sun was out and was shining on this area here, the entire area was filled with a sweet perfume of viola. So not really what you want to have in your lawn still, kind of beautiful in a way. So I think if we replace the lawn, what I'm going to do is try and dig up as many of those as I possibly can and find a nice location for them. Because this is one of those things where I just don't have the heart to uh, throw it out of the garden completely. That was pretty much it. This is the front garden at this time of the year. A lot of things are always like changing and happening and obviously there will be more tours as we progress in the year. Hope you enjoyed it. Thank you so much for watching today's video and I would really love to welcome you in my garden very soon again. Take care guys. Bye.